In this video, we'll take a look at perturbed attention guidance. This is a new method from our friends over at Korea University and Samsung Electronics. Now, this method is already available as a technique we can use inside of stable diffusion. Now, the basic idea is that it alters the way that stable diffusion looks at detail. And you can see some examples here of how it can work with control nets, image repair. And if we go further down, you can see some examples here. So they've got examples of conditional generation. And this is the baseline. And if we just scroll through, you can see the result with the new technique, PAG. That's before. Take a look at the dog right at the bottom left. Look at how it looks after PAG and look at how it looks before PAG. There's a huge difference there in the results. And we also get similar results or we get similar improvements inside of stable diffusion. So this is con unconditional generation inside of stable diffusion and before and with PAG. It's a massive difference. We can also see what happens when we apply CFG. So this is with CFG and this is with CFG and PAG. Now the framework is one which is explained in this paper here, it goes into quite some detail and some of the examples they give are pretty, pretty impressive. I was particularly impressed by the results that they got with the control nets because sometimes control nets, as you can see in these images here, they can be a little bit they can be a little bit unpredictable, but with the technique applied, you can see that we get much more clearer results. So it's all about detail. There are options for stable diffusion, web UI, comfy UI. It's all there. Let's take a look at this technique inside of comfy UI. Now the technique comes in as to, well, basically a couple of nodes. We've got the perturb perturbed attention guidance node and this one may be inside of your Comfy UI if it's completely up to date. And uh, if we go to Manager, we can also look for Perturbed Attention. Let's see. Let me just look at the installed ones. There we have Perturbed Attention Guidance form from this contributor here. That is what you need to download if you want to have the, the full shebang, but you might find that the nodes are already inside of Comfy UI if you have your Comfy UI up to date. So we would search for perturbed and there is actually one which is slightly more complex. And this one, you probably won't need to use this one. It has the same scale and it suggests three as the default. And we also have adaptive scale, UNet block and UNet block ID. So you can go into the woods if you really want to with a lot of this detail. I'm going to suggest that you probably don't need to actually use the advanced one. You can probably just get by with the perturbed attention guidance simple node. I've got two nodes here and one is for uh, the workflow that has got the refiner and we've got the refiner there, SDXL, and we've got the non-refined ones here. Now, having run several tests, I can tell you the, the results are pretty impressive. This is without, this is without. So we'll focus perhaps here on this image here. You can see here, we've got a guidance of one. I figured out that one, a scale of one doesn't produce much difference from the default and a scale of three produces pretty decent results. This is without. Take a look at the detail down here at the front. This is without and if we go to the one that has got the detail from the new method. Take a look at how there's more detail in this uh, in this staircase here. This is a beautiful, uh, this is a really beautiful prompt. One I borrowed from one of our friends over at Civit AI. Oh, by the way, the prompt is from a user called Kunj on Civit AI. And a lot of what you get with stable diffusion depends on the prompt but you can use these different techniques that like, like the one that we're using here to change the behavior. Look at this image here. This is without PAG. This is with PAG. There are subtle differences and we are really focused on the subtle differences rather than the, well, you could, if you want to assess the overall look, I would say the overall look of this one is pretty impressionistic. It is really nice. It looks very hurried as though someone just did it in a very quick, quick way. This one is more structured. There's more detail. 
we can actually see quite a lot of detail on the church before and after, but you can see the detail kind of makes a little bit more sense. It's more cohesive after. And we can actually see detail here that wasn't there before in this particular section. And the tree looks pretty impressive. This is without the refiner. This is the original image without the refiner. So it almost is working like the refiner, but not doing some of the weird stuff that the refiner does sometimes. Now, just to give you a word of a word of warning with this particular workflow, it is fairly complicated. It is used on the mastery course over at Udemy and it has got the model sampler tone map. It's got a very complex node there, which I've used to change the way the CFG scale functions. So you've got two things that are kind of affecting the, the, the way the image is interpreted, this sampler, this particular node here, and also the new node, the PAG node. And when you use it, I would urge you to take a look at the number of steps and to play around with the number of steps to see what sort of impact the new node has when you change the number of steps. I did actually do that. And perhaps we can take a look at that a little bit later on. This is a, uh, <laughs> this is a wonderful image of a bird. And here the refiner, actually did a fantastic job in adding detail. You can see the feathers there. You can see this little patch of light, which has this almost, almost ethereal feel to, to the image. The feathers look fantastic. The talons look a little bit messed up with the refiner, but the detail at the back there, which is prompted. This is another prompt from Civit AI. This is a beautiful image in both circumstances, but I think the hair, the feathers there look fantastic. If we look at this without, without the PAG, let's see what, it is one hell of a difference, I'll tell you that. So that particular prompt comes from Princess Art over at Civit AI, and it's a wonderful prompt. No, this is after applying PAG, this is afterwards. And let's see what happens before. Look at that. Look at the lack of detail in the talons. Look at the feathers at the back there. Part of the prompt is just not actually shown in the image, the way that the color just splashes everywhere. And then when we move over to the new one, just take a look at that. The way the feathers come to life, the color splash just emerges from the image. We also have slightly better looking talents there. Although I'm sure if we were to put these in the refiner, the refiner would probably mess them up again. So I think this is a fantastic way of working, particularly for people who use SDXL and maybe are a little bit wary of using the refiner because sometimes it does produce unwanted effects. This is maybe a technique you should be able to get some, some real advantage from.